loveys and welcome back to crazy but not dangerous i'm shorty vaughn and i've got a few life hacks for you today yeah because i got all caught up with my meal prep i've got extra time to do a few things around the house that have been neglected so let's let's get down to it yay hooray my coffee pot my trusty red coffee pot it's a proctor silex i paid very little money for this maybe about 25 dollars I've had it for almost four years. It's going good. Yay, hurry. I hate to say anything because I might jinx it. But it is one of the most neglected things in my house. Yeah, my coffee pot is a little bit gross. Yeah, it's disgusting. It needs some attention. PDQ. And this is a great life hack. So if your coffee maker starts to run a little bit slower than usual, if, you know, you just give it a couple swishes and make your next pot like I do. Yeah, your carafe might be a little bit gross. But it's easily remedied with things that you have around the house. That's a good thing. Yay, hooray. I have a measuring cup here. And then I have a big old jug of white distilled vinegar. This is 5%. That's my favorite because I think that it does the best job. 5% acid. So I'm going to pour about one cup or so into my measuring cup and then I'm going to go ahead and top it up with some water. So first let's go ahead and pour my one cup of vinegar into my coffee pot. And then I'm going to put two cups of water right in on top of it. There we go. Well, watch me dribble. There we go. More or less two cups. Not worried about it. Got a little dish rag right here. Make sure I wipe up my spills. And then pretty much I'm just going to go ahead and turn this on and let this brew that vinegar. And it is going to smell. I'm not going to lie. It's terrible. It will smell terrible. It will smell up your whole house like vinegar. But it will do an amazing job cleaning the inside of this coffee pot. And then also, as I let it sit, um, it will clean the carafe as well, making it easy peasy to just wipe out. And so what I'll do is let this brew. I'll let it sit probably for like an hour. And then we'll come back and do all the adjustments to it all the wipeouts and cleanouts and what have you so we can keep my favorite appliance going as long as humanly possible this is the longest coffee pot i have ever owned and i am like the color super thrilled about it super thrilled about the price you know i believe in taking care of the things that i have so i don't have to spend money replacing them all the time and this has just been a gem I've gotten my money, yeah, I've gotten my money out of it many, many times over. We brew coffee from about 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, usually my last pot goes on about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and then I cut it off before I go to bed. Um, I wake up in the morning, there's a little cup of coffee on my nightstand, have a few little sips of it before I come out and brew a new pot. I don't care if it's cold. When my mother was alive... I would get off work and I would get in the car and I would call her on my cell phone. You know, hands-free because safety first. But I would call her on my cell phone and she would keep me awake all the way home, you know, so that I didn't fall asleep at the wheel and crash and burn. But she, all right, good, you know, if I got off at midnight, hey, Tanya, what are you doing? You know, how was work? Let me go get a cup of coffee. Anyhow, she would go get a cup of coffee and I already had a cup of coffee because I'd take one from work before I hit the road. I was exhausted. I'm barely making it sometimes. Anyhow, she would go get her cup of coffee. I would have my cup of coffee. And my commute was like 45 minutes to an hour. And she would keep me company the whole time. And we would talk about what went on in her day and what went on in my day. And she always wanted to know, did anything weird happen to you today? And you know... Something weird happens to me every day. I'm just that person. I just keep rolling with it. Anyhow, I miss having a little coffee talks with my mom. And uh, I, have her, I have her coffee cup. Let me show you. This was my mom's coffee cup. 
yeah this is the one she always drank from the only thing missing is her red lipstick stain that uh you know all over the rim of the coffee cup yeah this was her coffee cup holds about six ounces i love the little handle on it it is a haul 1272 i don't know what that means probably made in china somewhere um but yeah this was her coffee cup and i don't drink out of it because i'm clumsy and worried about you know breaking it or what have you in my opinion like this is the one thing in my house that probably cannot be replaced so yeah super thrilled to have my mom's coffee cup and uh yeah reminds me of her a lot this is my favorite coffee cup and my old boss david gave this to me hello david if you're out there i still think very fondly of you came from world market and he just stuffed this full of candy gave it to me as a christmas gift and it's got this little silicone sleeve it also has like a little silicone lid but you know it's uh breakable so i don't really take it you know out on the road or anything like that but i could if i wanted to but i drink the coffee so fast it doesn't have a chance to really cool off but yeah like this think it's got a festive little happy pattern and this one holds significantly more than that one that's a good thing anyhow this one you always see in the background this one's andrew's coffee cup and he loves this it keeps it's very insulated keeps his coffee really warm he drinks like one cup in the morning maybe one cup in the afternoon he is the picture of moderation when it comes to the coffee and you know that's probably a good thing for him so there we go i had to pour my coffee off into this carafe so that i would have some as we were you know cleaning the coffee pot so i've still got hot coffee for the rest of the afternoon until i need to brew another pot and we'll be done cleaning this just in time for me to get started on my next pot so the next hack i learned from the appliance repairman that fixed my water line and my refrigerator and what have you anyhow you know the jet dry is super expensive like the small bottle is at least six the giant bottle is at least 13 it's a better value and i have always just bought it over at the costco and just paid for it and and then it's expensive but my dishwasher doesn't work worth a hell of beans if i don't have it it won't cycle properly it doesn't dry properly everything's spotted and looks terrible because we have terrible water so what I learned is that you can take a bottle any kind or anything you've got laying around hey if you've got an old jet dry bottle that's almost empty yeah save it just make your solution right in there now this may void your warranty if you have a new dishwasher because you know they've got all of that legal legal mumbo jumbo in there about only using approved products but if you're like me and my dishwasher is well past the warranty time, I don't care. Yeah, I'm going to save a few dollars. So, you know, I'm not telling you to do it, not advising you to do it. I'm just showing you what I'm going to do. So, you know, you're taking your chances. You are forewarned. But he said that this would work great. So I've got some hydrogen peroxide. It is 3%. I got this one over at the Albertsons because it was buy one, get two free. So they came out to 99 cents, basically. Um, I have seen 3% um, peroxide over at the Dollar Tree for $1.25, pretty much the same size bottle. You can hit it right there around the $1.150 mark. That would be great. Pennies on the dollar compared to the Jet Dry. Anyhow, I'm going to put the whole bottle in here. This is an old bottle. Andrew used to take Tang to work every day with him. You know, the drink of astronauts. And this was his jet board. Has his initials on it because, you know, he likes his name on everything. I Individual portions and his name on everything. I'm not fighting it. I just go with it now. So there we go got some hydrogen peroxide 3% in there. I have some of this Mrs. Stewart's liquid bluing. Liquid bluing is for laundry 
and various other sundry items. You can even make like a little science project and make crystals on it. It's got all kinds of information on the back. This will make your whites whiter, especially if you have like whites with colors and you don't want to put it into a bleach solution, but it maybe isn't as bright as it used to be. You can use, follow the directions on the back and you can use the Mrs. Whites for making your whites with colors extra bright. I think you can also use it to make your darks extra dark. I think it works both ways. My grandma had the most beautiful white hair that you would ever see and curly and lovely and you know just like that picture perfect grandma you know anyhow she used liquid bluing to make her hair extra white worked for her she also did it to her little white poodle dog that she called princess die so there you go i'm gonna put just a few drops of this liquid bluing in i'm gonna be very careful not to get this on my hands or my clothes um, it doesn't really stain, but it takes a while for it to come off. It's not like just easy. That's also why I have my um, waterproof apron on, just in case. So I'm going to give this just one, two, three, four, five drops, six drops maybe. Where's the lid? Put the lid back immediately six drops of that the next thing i have is a little bit of vanilla you know what's it called essential oil there we go that's it i have a little essential oil got this over at the dollar tree it's over where the candles and air fresheners are it's usually on a top shelf and they usually have like vanilla eucalyptus and lavender not like a whole big selection but you know Pretty much, you don't even have to do this part. This is just a little bit of, you know, it'll get activated by the uh, sanitized cycle, by the heated cycle, and it will smell fantastic. This is completely optional. The main ingredients are going to be the liquid bluing and then the hydrogen peroxide. And I don't know. Maybe, maybe we have like 25 drops in there, something like that. I am not going to shake this because I am too afraid that I'm going to have liquid bluing all over me and all over my kitchen. I'm going to go get something to stir it with. All right, I just got this wooden skewer here. I think that's going to do the trick and just give this a stir up. Smell it. Smells nice and vanilla flavored. I'm not, ha I'm not unhappy about it. And there we go. Gonna call it a day and put my lid on tight. I like this one because it has, you know, a little bit of a spigot on it, so it should allow for easy pouring. If it doesn't, you know, I would just go ahead and use maybe a funnel. And then, you know, if you don't want to use that funnel for anything else, if it gives you the willies to use it for filling up your dishwasher and then for you know funneling in your salt or pepper or whatever i would just go ahead and rubber band it to this so you have it all in one even if you have to buy a new funnel over at the dollar store we're into this about a dollar and you know maybe five or ten cents so even if you had to buy another dollar one funnel and then attach it and have it for filling up your reservoir in your dishwasher i still think you're coming out ahead of the game you know this is almost as much as the big 13 dollar one and yeah a dollar ten yay hooray all right i've got a load of dishes ready to go this is my reservoir here and i'm just gonna see how well that fills it up oh that does a good job there we go and my dishwasher seems to just drink it so we're at the full line now. No more needed. I have a few more breakfast dishes to stick in there. And so then I'll just add some soap and get it going. That'll be my first load of the day. Okay, now I'm going to put it through a couple of rinse cycles. And basically this is my water and vinegar brood solution. I'm going to go ahead and just pour that right into the sink. Replace my carafe. 
turn it off. And then I've got this big bunch of water. This is about 44 ounces. And I will go ahead and just pour that right in there. This is going to bring me just about all the way to the top of my coffee pot here. And then I'll just go ahead and brew it. I'm going to repeat this process two times. Yeah, once now, one more time to make sure that I get all of the vinegar out, to make sure that I have it all cleaned on the inside, and that all of my processes, the pump, the filter, the um, the water, the little water hose, you know, connector that goes into the, from the, uh, from the brewer into the drip stamp, that everything's clear of the vinegar and ready for delicious pots of coffee. Yay, hooray. You could do three cycles. Do it until you're comfortable. Do it until you think that it's sparkly clean. Yay, hooray. We are almost done with our second rinse um, brew and it no longer smells like vinegar in here, so I know we're done. And there we go. Take that out. Gonna dump it in the sink. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and just set the carafe off to the side because I want that to cool very thoroughly before we scrub the inside of it because I don't want any thermal shock. You know, it's piping hot. I add cold water to it. It could shatter. And then, you know, the chances of me being able to just replace the carafe slim to none unless I find one over at the Goodwill. Again, slim to none. So let that cool off all the way. Then I'm gonna, you know, just scour it. And while we're waiting for that, I'm just gonna take this little dish rag, got a little bit of soap on it, and I'm just going to go ahead and scrub all sides and the top and get it all sparkly clean. Yay, hooray. A little bit back here. Wipe the burner down. There's not much I'm going to be able to do about the discoloration on the burner. I'm not that worried about it. You don't really see it when it is, um, you know, when the carafe is in there. But just give the outside a really good little wipe down underneath. All around the edges. There we go. And then the only thing left for me to do is scour the crack. It already looks a million times better. Like you can actually kind of see the bottom a little bit now. That's going to clean up in no time. And this is almost cool. Can I just give it five more minutes? Then we'll give it a good scrub. I'm excited about a clean coffee pot. Yay, hooray coffee carafe it's sparkly clean on the bottom on the sides got all the gunk out looks like a brand new coffee carafe to me i think this is going to extend the life of my coffee pot a lot and i'm super excited about that i'd be really sad if it died and if it did i'd have to put on clothes and run somewhere at like four o'clock in the morning probably to a walgreens because i think that's probably the only thing open and buy a new coffee pot yeah, couldn't, couldn't even make it through the day. Would probably have to like stop somewhere and get a coffee. Probably like Circle K or McDonald's. So I could even make it over to the store. So extend the life of your coffee pot. I've made a solemn vow to myself to stay up on cleaning my coffee pot more often. Not to let it get so gross. <clears throat> Sometimes life gets in the way. What can I say? Anyhow, I'm going to brew a new pot because I'm almost out and yeah, gonna go back to work and do some things. Yay, hooray. All right, my lovelies. Well, I've had a lovely time spending this time with you, doing a few chores, getting a few life hacks on. I hope you found some value in this video. Thanks so much for watching Crazy But Not Dangerous. I'll see you next time. Be good, be careful, look both ways.